Hey everybody, how's it going? Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting event in coin history, and that is the VDB controversy. It's relatively rare that you see too much controversy within the numismatic world. I certainly can't think of anything too major recently, and especially not in terms of the artistic process, but today we're going to be covering the controversy that arose around the creation of the new Lincoln Wheat Penny and take a look at what happened, why it may have happened, some conspiracy theories, and give you the full picture of the events. And the unfolding of the controversy all happened on August 2nd, 1909. And the significance of that date is that that was the day that the new Lincoln Wheat Penny design was released. It was very hyped up and awaited as it would be featuring the first person on an American circulating coin, which was Lincoln. It was his 100th anniversary of his birth, and the coin, when it came out, was notable because there were the initials VDB of the designer, Victor David Brenner, prominently featured at 6 o'clock on the coin. Now, if you've seen one of these coins, it's not super prominent, but it definitely can be seen, and... There was backlash because people thought that it was either too big, too visible, and most importantly, too vain. After all, Brenner had been paid for his work, and while it was custom for people to put their initials on the coin, people thought that it was a little bit too ostentatious or showy that he had put it right there where everybody could see it. However, not everybody knows the exact reason that the VDB ended up being taken off the coin as there were also some interpersonal conflicts that were going on behind the scenes as opposed to just some backlash artistically. Before we go any further, I do want to give a little bit of backstory about Victor David Brenner. He was born Victoras Barnauskas in Lithuania, which is a country in Europe near Latvia, Russia, and Estonia, and he arrived in America as an 18-year-old immigrant and rose to prominence as a New York City jewelry engraver. He began to sculpt hubs and dies for metals and eventually instructed at the short-lived school for die cutting, so he did have some experience with carving things. Here's the die cutting, at least I think that that's what it looks like. And he also did join the American Numismatic Association all the way back then. So he was a numismatist or interested in numismatics, despite not really collecting too much or being involved with any engraving in the past. But in terms of setting the stage for this controversy, there was some speculation that there was some severe tension between Roosevelt and Barber. Charles Barber was the engraver of the mint. He's known for his Barber coins the Barber Dime, Barber Quarter, Barber Half Dollar, etc. And Barber apparently hated the idea of working with David Brenner as Brenner had never done anything outside of sculpting, so he wasn't numismatically involved in terms of making coins. He was a member of the ANA, as I said, but he wasn't actually making any coins himself. So he had done a good portrait of Lincoln, and I think that that's why people had interest in him but there wasn't exactly the best relationship between Barber and Brenner. And even after that, Brenner's design for the scent ended up getting chosen over Barber's, so that definitely contributed to the tension. But the interesting thing that not too many people know is that apparently Charles Barber refused to let Brenner use a small b somewhere else on the Lincoln scent and instead strongly advocated that the VDB go at 6 o'clock so prominently. So it definitely raises some suspicion on my end. It seems like Barber could have actually done this himself in order to get back at Victor David Brenner. Quick fun fact here, not too related. Roosevelt and other people didn't really like Barber's designs for the Barber Quarter, etc. So they wanted to change the coins, but there was actually a law that said that the circulating coins had to be in place for 25 years. So that's why 
they were able to immediately change the nickel into the buffalo nickel because the shield had been going for longer, but they needed to wait until 1916 for the Walking Liberty and the Standing Liberty quarters. But now for the conflict and the resolution. So no one knows exactly how it happened. Some people think that Barber actually caused the uproar and went around behind Brenner's back, kind of causing people to raise the issue. Other people thought that it just didn't look very good on the coin and, you know, people genuinely didn't want it there. And others really didn't care and didn't really mind that the coin was there. But whatever the reason or the feeling behind the coin, on August 5th, they stopped the presses, they stopped minting them, especially here's the San Francisco Mint, and they only made about 484,000 of them at the San Francisco Mint as opposed to 28 million for the 1909 VDB at the Philadelphia Mint. Different compromises end up being proposed, including to do nothing, remove the V and the D, or move the VDB to a more secretive location, and interestingly, Barber ended up forcing the VDB completely off of the coin. He wouldn't hear any compromise, and Brenner actually objected to this. He wanted to have his initials on the coin, but he wasn't going to put up too much of a fight, and they ended up getting taken off. But obviously, with this taken off, people scrambled to hoard the coins, and apparently, according to a person who was in San Francisco at the time waiting at the Mint, the 1909 SVDB coin sold for more than one cent immediately after being made, which is interesting. That's not normally the case. And the final, final end result is that 1917 saw a barber pass away, and the VDB initials were added in 1918. You can see them here. There's, I think that they're still on the coins, but they're in the shoulder area of Lincoln, and when Brenner ended up passing away in 1924, he had not seen any more of his work come into fruition, but we can still remember him as one of the most iconic coin sculptors as his design still circulates today over a hundred years later. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't already, I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay in contact with me on my Instagram, TreasureTownYT, Facebook, TreasureTown, or my website, TreasureTownYT.com. And I love receiving packages from you guys. I'll unbox them in a video once I get enough, and my address for that is TreasureTown, P.O. Box 201, Greenwich, Connecticut, 06836. So I'll see you on some of my other videos.